I'm sorry in advance. I, I don't have the clock. Um, can you warn me of, um, half an hour or so? Because I... Um, That's okay, especially because it will be not especially because it will be not particularly nice and exciting as the presentation before. I really like it, and uh, uh, we did not test uh, anything almost, so we are completely. On. So the, the the talk is uh, divided in, in let me say four parts. The as uh, first part, I, I'll present a European project we just started that include also. Melanox that um, is also represented here. And uh, I'll take a few slides on concurrency, so programming multicore actually, and on um, our effort of last one year or two years that is called FastFlow. And uh, at the end, uh, I'll present uh, an application that is an uh, image denoiser that works particularly well. And uh, um, first of all, paraphrase. Paraphrase is a European project that is uh, just started. It's a strap, and um, it's a quite, let me say, medium strap, and include uh, several country and companies, uh, Melanox and University of Torino I'm representing, and so on and so forth. And uh, what, what, what is about paraphrase? Paraphrase is about programming. We, we, we see a lot of hardware devices and so on and so forth. And instead, what we would like really to think on in how we should program this stuff. Because all this stuff are becoming much more complex every day. And we really would like to, to focus on how to build good application on that. And uh, in particular, we will, uh, uh, let me say, uh, think how how to build application in a decent way without being really, really uh, programming it at the metal level. So trying to abstract the, the, and easy the, the, the way of uh, uh, programming application. And this is particularly important because uh, as uh, an AMD speaker said before, and, but, and every, everybody know, and the, the microarchitecture are becoming every day more complex and are becoming hybrid and, and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, it, it will be really difficult to program this kind of stuff. And so we, we should to find something that will, uh, is uh, decently higher level. I, I should say not a library, not a compiler, but a programming model, because this is what we really need because we, we still don't have something that is suitable for that. For dealing with, uh, let me say, heterogeneous system, which you, and large system, which will be simply impossible to program each thread or each process or each whatever uh, independently. We, we need something that is really uh, more higher level. So uh, the, the project aim is actually uh, dealing with um, proposing patterns or that are also called the skeletons is their equivalent and uh, that is uh, quite a recent trend also in industry for example Intel TBB we can see that is somehow pattern based but uh, there are others and um, we are proposing that as a, a mechanism and uh, also to address the, the possibility of uh, let me say, dealing with um, dynamic reconfiguration of software and, uh, let me say, for large scale. This is, uh, let me say, paraphrase, basically. And uh, I hope to be uh, fast enough. Then, next topic that is a bit more, let me say, technical. And uh, I would like really to present a perspective of concurrency in the, in the, in the view of multicore. It is my personal, personal, personal perspective. I would like really to be the truth. Uh, but uh, this is really my vision. The, the problem is that we have many architecture. I mentioned some, for example, Sandy Bridge with QuickPath, Opterom, NVIDIA, GPU, and uh, uh, the forthcoming Intel, the forthcoming 
IBM processor, all of them are very, very complex, heterogeneous, and uh, include many, many different core, specialized core. And the problem we have is that the simplest one is already too complex for the programmer. It's too complex because it is already include many, many different mechanisms that is, let me say, not really help the productivity and the performance. For example, memory fences, or let me say, uh, the, the, the need of using not automatic cache hierarchies in GPU. So you have to program everything by hand. You, you have to use global memory, memory or atomic operation, and so on and so forth. And in particular, if you don't try, try. They are absolutely not suitable for fine-grain exploitation, fine-grain parallel exploitation. And if you think to address large scale, you will need fine-grain parallel exploitation because you have to, to find hundreds, uh, uh, thousands of uh, concurrent activities. So they will be fine-grained. Let us make a simple example. And uh, um, this is, for example, a very easy, it's, uh, let me say, uh, work that is written in a pseudo language. It's just a, what, what would you like to call master worker or farm? I call it farm. It's just dispatching different independent uh, tasks to a set of worker, for example, coming from a stream or for a whatever else from a file or, I don't know, this is, let me say, the code, parameters weeping or, and uh, let us test it on a normal machine that is an uh, um, eight core Intel machine. And this is what you get. As soon as the, the payload, so the, the work you, you do in, in the work uh, become fine green or decently fine green, this is the speed up. It's no speed up. It's less than sequential. This is an uh, Intel 8 core machine. So, for having something barely decent, oh, sorry, you have to, to, to keep really the, the, the grain of computation really coarse. Someone think that uh, 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 this is because of lock. And uh, so, one possibility is move from lock to atomic operation. This is what people do. Use lock-free memory model, or not memory model, programming model. But anyway, we should be aware that also atomic operation fence the memory and affect the cache, so need cache reconciliation. Indeed, if we take the same machine and we rewrite the code using lock-free, uh, atomic operation in memory, this is the speed up. It's not that much better. It's slightly better than POSIX log. Not as better as we expected at the very beginning. So here the problem is really memory coherency. And people that building GPUs know very well because didn't simply put any coherency. This is really against fine grain exploitation. So what we did in the last two years is try to rethink from the very basics what we can do for that, at least on multicore. And uh, we restart really from the basic programming model, thinking, for example, to producer consumer or mutual exclusion, really, really basic mechanism. We restart from the FIFO, FIFO Q. That can be used for many things. For can be used for building send receive, or can be used for sharing memory or uh, synchronization or whatever else. And uh, it is, uh, let me say, it is important to notice that producer consumer, in particular, uh, producer consumer model is not equally demanding of uh, mutual exclusion. There is a very nice uh, description of Maurice Early He on that, that is on his book, and uh, that proof basically that uh, mutual exclusion r really need atomic operation. You cannot implement it without atomic operation, while producer-consumer can be done without. This is just because producer-consumer has a 
natural master-slave relationship. There are no cycles in that. There is no competition. So it's theoretically easier problem. Of course, you have to deal with the fact that the modern, modern architecture are, are not only cache coherent, but also, also have very relaxed memory consistency. And so you are not even sure that uh, uh, two, two uh, let me say, operation in memory will be, can be linearized. They, they can really have races. They, they cannot appear in memory in the same order they are being issued from the processor. And this is, this is a problem, as we will see. This is uh, the Lamport 504Q, uh, 83, it's, it's quite old. It's uh, well known, it's very simple even. It's uh, so simple, it's so short. I think it's one of the most complicated algorithm uh, I have seen. And uh, uh, it is well known, and uh, maybe you didn't do it, but if you implement it on a Intel MD processor, doesn't work. Doesn't work because this doesn't work without sequential consistency. This really needs sequential consistency. So you cannot implement producer-consumer with this, let me say, seminal queue on a modern machine. And what we did is uh, re-implement that, starting from existing results, it's not uh, all uh, our work we did. Uh, but, I mean, I will not spend time on proofs that it work. I would like just to show you that what is the important thing of this queue. You can see here that this queue, the, the right one, the fast flow queue, never compare the, the head with the tail, while the Lamport queue do compare the tail and the head. It means that for every pop and every push in the queue, this queue produces a cache invalidation. This doesn't. Of course, you may have cache invalidation because of payload, so the data you put in the queue. But these are really cannot be avoided because they are true, true dependencies. Why the, the, the cache invalidation you got in the, in the control of the queue are not due you can avoid. Indeed, what you get is, uh, well, this is our queue. This is quite large grain, but as, as soon as you go to medium grain, you see that this queue we implemented is very good, while the, the other queue, like, for example, the lock-based queue and the atomic operation queue, decrease in performance, and here for fine, fine grain, we still get some benefit from parallelism, while the other mechanism cannot get any benefit. You may think that it's really too simple, so we tested against Intel TBB, we tested against OpenMP, we tested against Silk, and what, you get, what we got is that we, let me say, at least in the code we tested, that are micro benchmarks and application I'll show you later, we are always faster than that. I didn't never see that we are slower, so it's challenging, but uh, it's okay. This is, uh, I think they are the best we can find on the market, and this is just a measure of latency. They're, they're just a, a measure, let me say, on different socket, same core, different socket, same, same different socket, and two contexts in, in an Intel core, and we see that uh, the latency of uh, communication from, let me say, on different socket on a multicore is around 30 nanoseconds. Today I see Panda say that MPI is 190 nanoseconds for send receive on a multicore, uh, and uh, well, this is let me say 10 times better, I think, and uh, of course. It's not the same machine, but I mean, it is an order of, ma of magnitude. We recently, even with the support of, uh, this is really our HPC Advisory Council supported us in that, and in testing and 
access to machine. We really extended the result because we recently built also an unbound version of the same queue that is, uh, 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 is done like that. We'll, it's a new algorithm is currently submitted. I will not say a lot of that, but I can say that this is very, very, a very, very good speed up. We succeeded to have a speed up up to linear speed up on a 64 uh, Intel Core machine. And uh, I would like also to say that it's very well known that uh, it's, uh, uh, it's pretty much faster than the, the, let me see, the reference solution in this field that is Michael and Scott Q. This is uh, Michael and Scott Q, and this is our Q. Michael and Scott Q has something like 400 reference in uh, literature, so it's, it's very, very well known. Just to summarize this part of the background. I'm sorry, this is a bit technical, but I cannot really avoid. And uh, just to summarize the, uh, the, the result, this is uh, uh, what, what we, you, you can really do is uh, the, you, you cannot, uh, uh, the, the, the summary of the, the, let me say, state of the art of the queue, the current scenario can be uh, can be accessible offline also on the slide. So at, at this point in time, since the, the latter, I will talk about uh, uh, GPUs as well. I would like to insist on the fact why, why, why we are, let me say, uh, thinking too much to this simple stuff that are queues. It's, it is because we think that they are important. And if you think really careful, they are very important also for GPUs, because if you look carefully, carefully to, to the architecture and to the manual that NVIDIA people wrote, they clearly stated that the only way you, have, you, you can have a global synchronization on a GPU is a queue, is a queue on memory. You, you cannot synchronize another way around. Whether you, you exit from the kernel of if you need to synchronize, you have to build a queue in memory using atomic operation. And to my knowledge today, I didn't see any lock-free queue for GPUs. I think it will be nice to have one because it will be for sure faster f f of going with respect to going to uh, global memory and using atomic operation. So we think that this work will be also important in GPU or at least GPU perspective because of course you, you can avoid to synchronize but you can avoid to synchronize all, only for very very simple problem because sooner or later you need to synchronize unless you have very independent problem like for example big simulation that in which everything is independent. If we would like to promote this architecture as, uh, let me say, general purpose architecture, we need uh, to solve also more complex uh, problems. Okay, just, uh, 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 we are on at half. So just a few words on fast flow that has, has my work on last two years. Building uh, on that, on all this, let me say, Q technology and uh, theory, what we did is uh, try to build a programming, programming framework that is expressive enough to, to, uh, for programming anything, basically anything, that is high level, so as patterns, as TBB, but can be compiled in graph that are connected with fast queues. So this is the idea. So we use uh, actually a bit of generative programming from C++. And uh, what we did is just defining a number of patterns, like, for example, I see in a while, pipeline, farm, map, reduce, whatever else. And for each of them, we uh, derive a, a graph that is composed by threads or, let me say, computing elements that uh, can be synchronized by using fast queues and then can receive data by, through queues and we generate automatically from the pattern the uh, uh, graph that implement this particular pattern. Uh, this is uh, 
on SourceForge, so if anybody would like to test, and many people t are testing even from, I see from Intel, Intel tested them. And um, so j just to make the point here, so w what we did is just to try to abstract the parallelism exploitation pattern by using parametric queue that are patterns and uh, find a way for having a good implementation of that. This pattern, of course, are platform independent because they are completely abstract. We just uh, um, expect to compile them by using generative programmer or programming or, co or compiler on a, a different architecture or even on a hybrid architecture. And they uh, are supposed to provide the, the state of the art implementation in such a way they are also efficient. Uh, let me return a while on patterns. I, I have something here, just examples. One is, a, for example, farm, pipeline, map, reduce, dividend, conquer, and so on and so forth. For each of them, we found a way of describing it or in terms of graphs or in terms of, in this case, CUDA primitives. For example, uh, the farm can be expressed by using CUDA streams and pipeline can be expressed again by using CUDA streams, and map and reduce can be um, expressed easily on CUDA by using, uh, let me say, the native thread of CUDA and reduce as well. And uh, everything here can be mixed and can be freely nested. For example, you can write a uh, I don't know, a farm of pipeline or a pipeline of farm in which the second stage is again a farm or a pipeline of map reduce or whatever else. And what we did is just define a way of composing either graphs or CUDA primitives. And this, uh, let me say, work enough well. Work enough well. Okay. Let me return on MPI because uh, this morning, Someone suggested that uh, uh, well, we should discuss, we should be provocative. I try to be pro the much pro provocative I can. Uh, I love MPI. I don't know if Panda is here. I, I really love it. I mean, oh, sorry. I really love Panda. I, really, I, I also read the source, I promise. I did many years ago, but it was MPI GH at, at, at this stage. It was perfect. Let me say, the implementation level was perfect. My problem was the one, over 100 primitives that are on, on the implementation le over the implementation level. Because I never understand what were they are for. If there, any programmer that know all these primitives that can distinguish by I think or uh, the, the, the many variant of anything. For example, I, I do believe that, uh, let me say, MPI collective operations are very good. I really would like a programming model in which you can use only collective operation, no send receive, because send receive are a car, but but you have always to think who drive the car because if you need, let me say, a very very expert programmer that writes something that is working because with send receive you can write what you want. And it's even difficult then to tune to program to port the code on different machine and to achieve very, very good performance. Uh, yeah. Despite that, I'm currently using it, MPI. But I'm using typically as target for a compiler. Because it's very nice if you use as, a, let me say, a target for a preprocessor from another language. So only use the, let me say, in a controlled way, not, not give to the, to, to the real program. So uh, just, just to, 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 to return back to, 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 to the matter of pattern, uh, I, I do believe that, uh, lo looking again, this, this is the, the, the presentation from uh, John Owens to a supercomputing to, to 107. And uh, it is, let me say, sometimes it, it is also a bit, uh, let me say, the, the, 
I got depressed looking at that because we, we already invented everything because everybody know that, uh, for example, this is in the case of GPU. GPU should program it this way, map, reduce, scan. So th this is the correct way of programming with GPU. And uh, you, you can find it in any talk from NVIDIA, in any talk at supercomputing, gas plus. Uh, look uh, at the very good uh, GP, GPU site. There are a lot of slides in this sense. It's just a matter to say, OK, guys, don't use CUDA. Use this. Because CUDA is simply too complex for you. L let, let leave CUDA for the system programmer. What we did is just add some other pattern to that. Let me say, not even particularly complex. In particularly, here, if you think a while, farm and pipeline, since GPU are basically a data parallel processor, farm and pipeline have not big sense, but they are very helpful for doing something that is, they, they, let me say, automatically using asynchronous communication. By using these primitives, farm and pipeline, you can just uh, use uh, uh, a synchronous communication facility from GPU, and that's a plus, a little plus. Okay. It's just a recap, but I think I really don't need uh, to spend a lot of time in that. It's just we try to, to work on patterns. This is very in the perspective of paraphrase project, and uh, use a uh, bit of generative programming to generate cyclic stream of network. As someone, as the, the, the person from Melanox said this morning, cyclic network always have a deadlock inside. And uh, let me say, a possibility of deadlock inside, this is the reason why we develop an unbound queue. Because by using an unbound queue, the possibility to have a, dev, a deadlock is much more uh, limited because you can always expand uh, the, the buffering space, and it's very difficult to be in the case that you are in a deadlock because you run out of space in the buffer. We developed a lot of applications for testing that. Some of them are particularly interesting, and uh, in uh, one minute or two minutes, I leave the, 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 the microphone to Maurizio that will describe this particular application. Some are, let me say, particularly important. This is, I think, important because uh, we compared the, the performance with the Plasma library that everybody knows, and everybody knows that it's very good. It's very highly optimized. So having something that is based on general programming model that can reach the, the performance of Plasma library is a, is a big result for us. And even we are a little faster, but it doesn't matter. If even getting the, the same performance is a big result. And uh, we, we do develop some uh, classification algorithms. This, for example, KDD, and, uh, that are quite complex and irregular code. So it's not really data parallel at all, because you may have very unbalanced tree to work on it. And, it's very difficult, and this is a typical divide and conquer problem. And uh, this is the Smith Waterman problem we compare again against uh, OpenMP and Silk. And this algorithm is currently used by hardware manufacturer as baseline for uh, FPGA implementation because uh, uh, it has been recognized as uh, one of, let me say, the, let, I would like to say that the fastest so software implementation open source, I don't know if it will be the fastest, but for sure it's one of the faster. And uh, it's developed with this technique. Uh, since here there are a lot of MD or Intel at the very end, I added this because all, all the tests we did, I presented are on an Intel machine. In reality, we use it both. We have one AMD and one uh, Intel, so we really don't uh, are particularly sensible to the difference. And I have my own opinion on the difference uh, as, a, let me say, at least expert user. Eh? If someone would like to talk about it, I can, but it's, 
nothing I can say here officially. It's something that uh, make re re me really curious and, uh, and cannot understand is why in both architecture still lacking the uh, decent way of managing memory. Because we see that the memory is fast, the memory is fast, and so on and so forth. This is a bit faster, this is less faster. But the real problem is the memory is uh, uh, non-uniform anyway, and there is any tool to manage memory affinity. And there is not in Intel, uh, neither in Intel nor in IMD platform, to my knowledge. It will be something really nice. So. I, I leave the, the microphone. I think I, we have enough time because in uh, 10 minutes we com conclude to Maurizio that uh, using this technique developed a new algorithm that is a denoiser. And Maurizio is a master student at my university. He's a, so he's a student and it's uh, his first, first experience talking on a conference. So please be nice with him. Okay. Uh, I will speak about fast flow uh, from a very applicative point of view because uh, I'm not I've not uh, been involved in fast flow development um, only by use and in particular I will present this uh, application which is a uh, denoiser we developed in the last uh, year yes and uh, first of all some uh, result images. Uh, on the top row we have uh, an, a test image, uh, a classical test image in digital image processing field. And um, a test image with uh, some different level of noises, uh, 10, 50, and 90 percent. And on the bottom row we have uh, the corresponding image restored by our uh, algorithm. The 50% uh, noisy image, um, we have uh, the restore image that uh, have, has a quality which is um, analogous to a JPEG compressed image. So it's a very high quality algorithm and the 90, 90 noisy image uh, Early. The restore image is still so good. Uh, here we see the algorithm is a two phase algorithm. The first phase is a detection phase in which uh, uh, we we call detect phase in which we try to, uh, to for each pixel we say that pixel is uh, noisy or not noisy uh, so we apply a filter based on uh, adaptive median filter so for each pixel we consider a neighboring some neighboring pixels we compute the median of these pixels and uh, we decide his, if uh, this pixel is not or not. And uh, obviously, uh, in this phase, the image is used read-only. Uh, then uh, it, the pixels could, can be processed in parallel. Uh, the operation of in, over each pixels are independent. Second phase uh, is a uh, phase we call the noise, in which for each, for each noisy pixel uh, we try to um, to correct it, so to replace its uh, uh, corrupted value with a restored value, uh, such that uh, the new value, the new pixel, let me say the new pixel, um, yeah, better integrate in the surrounding. So. Um, if it's uh, on an edge, uh, the edge is tried to be to to, to be preserved, and uh, that's the reason uh, why this method performs uh, so good in terms of, of restoration quality. Okay, uh, one could say uh, that 
two methods could be used uh, and alone. But uh, if we try to use the median filter also for restoration, um, we obtain a too smooth image. So uh, the variational method uh, we presented before uh, has the good property to, to keep edges. Uh, but if we, if we use it uh, alone, um, um, we can destroy good pixels, so uh, the solution to use phase algorithm um, allows to to apply the, the, the restoration only to noisy pixels. Okay, uh, here a visual perspective of the of the procedure. We have an, in, an image corrupted by by 70% noise. And uh, this is the result of the restoration algorithm. And this is the original image. OK. Um, we um, implemented a parallel version of the algorithm, uh, exploiting offloading, yeah, soft or hardware offloading. are speed up graphs uh, over small and high and uh, big image and we say that in big image uh, the speed up is uh, nearly ideal um, when we try to extend this procedure uh, into a video version so iterate in the same procedure uh, over various frames of a video. Um, we started from a legacy procedure uh, which uh, used the Intel OpenCV library that is not fully thread safe. So we, we had to be careful. And uh, we note that uh, using offloading support, um, in this case, uh, and in all cases I have used, um, results a uh, very nice technique to port existing legacy code. Uh, because one um, one had to one have to do no modifications to to the, the legacy code. Uh, this is the skeleton of the video version of the algorithm. Okay, which um, okay, uh, there is an iteration of the two-phase algorithm, and um, the only modification is to to build the pipeline, in which the two phases mm, are the two stages of the pipeline, and this pipeline uh, could be built in several fashions, or multi-core plus multi-core, or multi-core plus GPGPU, uh, etc. And uh, obviously, one had had not to to deal with these uh, with these aspects at the design time, and uh, this is the general skeleton with uh, the gray part, uh, the gray blocks uh, that are the legacy code, and um, the right part of the of this graph is um, okay, is the the parallel arch architecture. Uh, so in this case we have simply a farm in which uh, the, node of the nodes of the farm are pipelines of detect and the noise uh, stages. Here we have uh, a, a pipeline uh, in which the second stage is a map, uh, a CUDA map. And here we have an hybrid version in which um, the second is a farm and uh, the nodes are pipeline and the second stage of each pipeline is a CUDA map. So uh, we note here uh, how the legacy parts of the code, which are the gray blocks, uh, don't change at all. And uh, here we have some uh, results. 
that on a big image, which is uh, the spatial image we see before. Um, in the sequential version, it uh, took five hours. And um, using the hybrid structure we say, uh, we can uh, restore it in little more than one minute. Okay. Um, They cleaned the image. Sorry, I, I just and uh, th this version uh, is. Uh, let me see the multicore version. You can see on the top that we are using two core, the the, the gray bar, and um, and this is the multicore because this this little laptop has an Nvidia card, even is really little, and. Um, you can see that this is the let me say Nvidia version. This is a bit faster, not not particularly uh, faster. This is let me say ten frames per second, while the other was two three frames per second. And um, but what I would like to stress is that we didn't rewrite the code, so it's the same code, and uh, this is the important part because uh, the same pattern in which you can move from one, one architecture to the other to the other. In this particular case, we did some, uh, let me say, ant optimization for using shared memory, what, let me say, NVIDIA people call shared memory, and uh, in my view should be called cache, but doesn't matter, or register, at least. And uh, because we, we didn't have any automatic way to use it currently, but we are working on. There are some nice tools that are coming up, like par for all or others that seems good enough to translate the code. And I just complete the talk. And um, OK, we skip that. And uh, yes. No, also first. I'm using that. Just to conclude, we, we presented uh, our work of, uh, let me say, last two years. We focused particularly on uh, programming. And uh, we are interested in using any architecture. We, we don't care too much which architecture. We are particularly interested, for example, now in looking at new IBM architecture that has, let me say, general purpose core, a specialized core for doing parsing, encryption, so on and so forth, and probably also soft core like FPGAs, and so on and so forth. And we really, is, we found really intriguing trying to understand how this stuff can be programmed, because it will be not easy at all to understand that. And um, on the more the application we show, the, the application I would like to see that uh, has been entirely by Maurizio, that is a master student, that um, found uh, actually the algorithm was quite well understand, but he make it really fast by finding two or three loop invariant by hand that make the algorithm, let me say, at least 1,000 faster than existing version, and uh, parallelized it, and it's been a very, very nice job. And uh, I'm, I'm OK. Even if we are in time, I think um, we, we will have a longer break, and nobody will complain, I think. If there are some questions, of course, you are ready.